Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Paquette, and I'm an HCL Big Fix Technical Advisor out of Charlotte, North Carolina in the United States. And today we're gonna to introduce you to the Big Fix self-service application. We're gonna talk about what the self-service application is, what the requirements are to configure it, and how to customize it. We'll also take a look at what the end user sees in order to interact with it. Uh, please feel free to scan the QR code in your video if you have any questions after the video that you'd like to send me via LinkedIn. So the Big Fix self-service application is an App Store-like interface so that the end user can self-serve software. And obviously the value here is, is they're not creating a typical software uh, request via ticketing system uh, and so forth, but it allows them to uh, deploy commercial software like an Acrobat Professional or even freeware like a Chrome or Firefox browser. This supports Mac and Windows, and in Windows it's found in the system tray or taskbar notification, and in a Mac it's found in the menu bar at the top right of the screen. The requirements for the Big Fix self-service application are a Big Fix server and client version of 9.5.3 or higher, Windows 7 or Mac OS 10 10.9 and higher, the Big Fix client user interface must be enabled, and the web user interface, which is our web-based console, must be deployed for software icon support. So let's take a look at exactly what the self-service application looks like. And here in my Big Fix environment, down here in the tray, you can see the Big Fix self-service application in the bottom right of your screen with a Big Fix logo to click on. And here is my self-service application with the various software that I can deploy. You'll also notice this one called Fix VPN. And this is a uh, unique use case, but not all that uncommon for a self-service application, uh, where we had a customer with a VPN dialer that would lose its configuration on the endpoint. And so they implemented a fix um, via the self-service application as a workaround until their vendor fixed the VPN dialer code. So uh, end users were trained to self-serve on this, which reduced a significant volume of help desk calls just for VPN activity. So uh, interesting use case. So you don't have to use it just for deploying software. Uh, I also have a history here of any items that have been deployed via the self-service application. And I can, at option, enable the end user to look at the various admin actions that have been fulfilled via Big Fix on their endpoint. More on this later. Within the Big Fix console, in order to enable the self-service application, I first must go to the system lifecycle domain. I am then going to expand software distribution and I'm gonna click on the Big Fix self-service application node. And within this node, you will find some tasks that will deploy the self-service application to relevant endpoints for Mac or Windows, upgrade the self-service application for Windows or Mac, and you can see that I have some upgrades to send out to some existing endpoints. Uh, I can enable a setting that shows or hides those administrator actions from the history view. And of course, I have the typical removal task. And so I can send this and target this out to particular endpoints in my environment. Like in anything in Big Fix, it's not uh, all the environment. I can selectively choose what endpoints get it. Now, as we come over to the web UI, I'm going to come here under the apps menu, go to software. And you can see I've got various software packages created already for uh, deploying to endpoints or deploying via the self-service application. And I'm going to add some software. And now I can choose a file. I can point to a URL. I can add an optional username or password. But in this case, I'm just going to point to a file. We're going to keep it simple. And we're going to choose a Google Chrome MSI. And we're going to upload that file. And in this page, I get a status uh, up on the upload. I can change the file. It populates with the software name. I'm going to call this Google Chrome 2 because it's my second uh, package I've built. I'm going to give it a category of web browser. And you can create whatever categories you want. I'm going to call this the Google Chrome install. And more importantly, in the configuration tab, I'm going to call this install. Google Chrome. And that's the way it'll appear within the self-service application. Down here, I can enable 
in on install or not because it's an MS, MSI based package. But the key thing up here is where I can change the icon in the upper right. And so I'm going to point to an icon file that I've downloaded for Chrome, and that little GIF package icon will change to the familiar Chrome icon. And I'm going to go ahead and save this package. Now, when we go to deploy a package like this in order to populate the self-service application, I'm going to come back here to software, and I'm going to choose my first Chrome package because I already have applicable endpoints to that. Uh, and we're doing this in the interest of time. And I'm going to go ahead and click on deploy software. And I'm going to choose one of my applicable endpoints. I'm going to choose to do the deployment versus the uninstall package. That's part of this build. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And I'm going to leave this open-ended, which makes it a policy action. So until the end user deploys the software, it's going to remain relevant and populated within the self-service application. I'm also going to send this as an offer. And you'll notice my option here to only send it to the software distribution client dashboard. And I can also include notification to that end user and download required files now if, uh, if desired. I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna deploy that package. Now, we're gonna switch over to a Windows 10 client. We're gonna to check to see that the package has made it to the self-service application. There it is. And I'm gonna click on this package and choose to self-deploy as an end user. Now this will take about 30 to 40 seconds and we can come back to this. Uh, but when we come back, we'll find out that the icon is indeed on the desktop and ready for use. While we wait on that, I'm gonna come over to the gear function here, the uh, settings function in the web UI. And you'll notice I have an option for the self-service application. So within the self-service application, this is a ability to configure it. And I'm gonna call this configuration one. So I can create multiple custom configurations for the way that that self-service application appears. I'm gonna call this my company's self-service application. So whatever your company name is, and that's how it will appear at the top of the self-service application. And I can also put a message at the bottom as a help message or whatever that helps direct them or gives them a little more context. I can even change the color of the title bar. I can also change the icon. So if you have a company icon, mascot, what have you, uh, this will make the self-service application look and feel just like your own internal IT application. So your end users that see this for the first time in their tray aren't panicked, they aren't not calling the help desk. I can enable the history tab as we looked at previously in the self service application. And I can enable the power management tab. So if you're a customer who has lifecycle, who's using power management uh, within Big Fix to uh, uh, do analytics on their power consumption and manage power consumptions on endpoints, we can have that tab there. We can also enable a technician tab. And these are customizable tabs that can be informative uh, at the endpoint for desk side technicians. Of course, we come back over to the Windows 10 desktop and the Chrome install has completed. Icons on the desktop. And I can certainly launch Chrome and start browsing the internet with Chrome. That is our short video on what the self-service application is, how to do your basic configuration, and how to create a package and successfully deploy it to the self-service application, including customizing the self-service application for your organization and what the end user would see. If you have any questions, please hit me up on LinkedIn via the QR code at the start of the video. Thank you.